My girlfriend smiled and said, I'm pregnant. But I knew she cheated, so I followed her, exposed everything, and ruined her life in front of everyone. If you only read the title, I might sound like a bad guy. But I'm not. I've known I wanted to be child-free since my early teens. My parents didn't oppose me, but they did say I could change my mind. Since I'm not an only child, they'll still get grandchildren. When I was 20, I got a vasectomy. When I was 22, I met my girlfriend. I've been open about wanting to be child-free from the very beginning. I remember telling her about my vasectomy, but to be honest, I think there was already alcohol involved. So, I'm not sure if she remembers. Have a night, Vanna. We were dating for a year and a half when she moved in with me. I'm now 25. Two weeks ago, I got home from work, and my girlfriend was standing in the living room smiling. She showed me the positive pregnancy test. Thinking it was a TikTok prank, I played along. When she didn't reveal it was a prank, I knew what had happened, but I continued playing along. That night, I got up at midnight and started sending emails. I took a week off work and emailed my best friends the details, telling them to pretend they knew nothing and be prepared. The next morning, I left for work as usual, but I didn't go to work. Carl, one of my friends, was waiting outside. He had a cap and a hoodie ready for me. The whole week, we followed Katie, and on day three, she met up with her affair partner. We followed them to a motel, and then Carl followed him to his home. The guy was married with kids. We devised a plan. I convinced Katie to go to her parents' house to tell them the good news last Saturday. While there, I gave my friends the keys to my home. At Katie's parents' house, we had lunch with the parents and siblings first, and then Katie told them the good news. Everyone was happy. After a while, I got a call I had to take. It was my friends telling me they were done and ready. So I asked to make an announcement. I pulled Katie aside in front of everyone. I bet they thought I was going to propose. I started by telling how we met, how much she meant to me, and ended with, and that's why it hurt so much that you cheated on me and got pregnant by someone else. The room was silent. Katie looked shocked. She started telling me it wasn't a funny joke. I said, I'm not joking. The moment you told me you were pregnant, I knew you cheated. I got a vasectomy five years ago, and I go to checkups every year, so if you're pregnant, you have cheated. <laughs> At that moment, her phone rang. I told her to answer it. It was probably AP's full name. You know, the real father of your baby. Probably wants to talk about you moving in. Not sure if his wife and kids are going to like that. What happened was that my friends had loaded up everything of Katie's in a U-Haul and brought it to AP's home. When they called me, they were in front of his home for the final part. They rang the doorbell and asked the AP where they could put her things. He was confused, and they handed him and his wife a folder with pictures of him and Katie. And Carl said... Since OP is kicking her out, she needs a place to stay. We're just here delivering her things. And since you don't want the woman who is pregnant with your child to stay on the street, we assumed you would take her in. AP called Katie yelling that she ruined his life and he never wants to see her again. After hearing him scream over the phone, I said, Oh, so his wife doesn't want his mistress and their affair baby living there. So you'll have to stay here with your parents. With that, I walked away leaving a crying Katie and her confused and angry family behind. My friends brought the U-Haul with her stuff to her parents' house after the AP refused to accept it. I went home where my sister was waiting for me. She knew everything. This was not part of my plan, but Carl knows me so well. I broke down and cried in my sister's arms. She stayed the weekend taking care of me, allowing me to grieve and process the betrayal. Update 1. Okay, so after all that drama went down, I thought I could just move on. Like, I figured Katie would stay at her parents' house, her family would deal with her, and I could start figuring out how to rebuild my life. Spoiler alert, that's not what happened. Apparently, Katie isn't the type to quietly accept consequences, which, in hindsight, I probably should have known. The day after everything blew up, I was chilling at home with my sister, still processing everything, when I got a notification on my phone. It was a text from Katie. She started off with, We need to talk which is always code for, I'm about to make your life harder. I ignored it. I mean, what could she possibly say? But then she started spamming me with texts, stuff like, you misunderstood everything and it's not what you think. Like, how much clearer could it get? She's pregnant, I had a vasectomy, and I literally caught her meeting her affair partner. It's exactly what I think. By the evening, her texts turned into calls, and when I didn't answer, she started calling my sister. My sister, being the MVP she is, blocked her without even hesitating. 
Katie must have realized she wasn't getting anywhere with us, so she escalated. I woke up the next morning to find Katie sitting on my front porch. She looked like she hadn't slept, her eyes were red from crying, and she had this whole speech prepared. She said she made a huge mistake and begged me to hear her out. I told her there was nothing to talk about. I reminded her that I had proof of everything and that she needed to leave before I called the police. But she wasn't leaving without a fight. She went on this whole rant about how she never meant for this to happen and how the affair partner didn't mean anything to her. She said she only met up with him because she was feeling lonely and that it was a moment of weakness. Yeah, sure, Katie, you just accidentally fell into a months-long affair. Makes total sense. I asked her if the baby was even his. That's when she started crying even harder and said she didn't know. I couldn't help but laugh because, at that point, what else could I do? I told her that it didn't matter whose baby it was because I wasn't going to stick around to find out. She asked if there was any way we could work things out, and I told her no. I said I didn't trust her, and even if the kid wasn't his, I didn't want kids in the first place. I thought that would shut her down, but instead she said, But you could learn to want kids for us, for me. That's when I realized she wasn't just delusional, she was desperate. She had no backup plan. Her affair partner had ditched her, her parents were furious, and she was grasping at straws to avoid dealing with the mess she created. I told her again to leave, and when she wouldn't, I called Carl. Carl is the type of friend who thrives in chaotic situations, and I knew he'd know how to handle this. Sure enough, he showed up in ten minutes flat with a bag of snacks and the most obnoxious air horn I've ever seen. He started blasting the air horn every time Katie tried to talk, and after about five minutes, she finally gave up and left. But it didn't end there. Nope, Katie decided to take things online. She made this long, dramatic Facebook post about how I humiliated her in front of her family and how I destroyed her relationship. She conveniently left out the part where she cheated on me and got pregnant with another guy's baby. I only found out because mutual friends started messaging me, asking if I'd really kicked her out while she was pregnant. At first I ignored it, but when she started tagging me in posts and trying to paint herself as the victim, I decided to set the record straight. I made one post, just one. I kept it short and simple. For anyone wondering, Katie cheated on me, got pregnant by another man, and lied about it. I have a vasectomy. End of story. I attached the picture of her with her affair partner at the motel and hit post. It blew up. People were sharing it left and right, and suddenly Katie's whole poor me narrative fell apart. She ended up deleting her Facebook account entirely. I, got I thought that would be the end of it, but then her mom showed up at my door. Yeah, her mom. Apparently Katie had spun some story about how I was being unreasonable and how I was ruining her life. Her mom wanted to hear my side and figure out what was really going on. I told her everything. I showed her the proof, the pictures, the texts, all of it. Her mom just sat there, speechless. She apologized for her daughter's behavior and said she had no idea Katie had been lying. She promised they'd take care of her and that I wouldn't have to deal with her anymore. For a few days, things were quiet. I thought I was finally in the clear. But then, out of nowhere, I got served with legal papers. Katie was trying to sue me for emotional distress. I couldn't believe it. The audacity. I called my lawyer, who basically laughed and said the case had no merit. Still, it was another headache I didn't need. We filed a response denying all her claims and pointing out that she was the one who caused the distress by cheating and lying. While all this was going on, I started to notice some weird stuff around my house. My trash cans were being knocked over, random people were ringing my doorbell and running away, and I even found a few scratches on my car. I set up a camera, and guess what? Katie was behind it. She was sneaking around my house trying to intimidate me or something. I sent the footage to my lawyer and filed for a restraining order. <laughs> the judge granted it, and now Katie legally can't come within 500 feet of me or my house. Things have finally started to settle down, but every once in a while I catch myself looking over my shoulder half expecting her to pop out of nowhere with another scheme. I'm just trying to take it one day at a time and focus on moving forward. Anyway, that's where things stand for now. It's been a wild ride, but I'm hoping this is the last chapter in the Katie saga. Fingers crossed, update two. All right, buckle up, because this is the final chapter in the saga, and trust me, it's wild.
I thought things couldn't get more chaotic after the restraining order, but Katie somehow managed to top herself. So after the restraining order was in place, things got quiet for about two weeks. No weird trash incidents, no random doorbell rings, nothing. I was finally starting to relax. But then I got a call from a number I didn't recognize. Normally I wouldn't answer, but curiosity got the better of me. It was Katie's dad. He asked if I could meet him for coffee. I wasn't exactly thrilled about the idea, but he sounded serious, so I agreed. When we met up, he looked exhausted like he hadn't slept in days. He apologized for everything that had happened and said he wanted to make things right. I asked him what he meant by that, and he dropped a bombshell. Apparently, Katie wasn't just cheating on me with the one guy. I was one of three dudes she was stringing along. The pregnancy had thrown a wrench in her plans because now she couldn't keep up the juggling act. Her dad said she'd been lying to everyone, including her family, about the extent of her affairs. Here's where it gets even crazier. Her dad had done some digging after I exposed everything. He found out Katie had been meeting up with these other guys in secret for months, and one of them was someone she used to date back in high school. She had been telling each of them a different story. One guy thought she was single, another thought she was in an open relationship, and then there was me, the boyfriend she was planning a future with. Her dad said the pregnancy had caused a full-blown meltdown in their family because Katie still refused to admit whose baby it was. Apparently, Katie was clinging to the hope that I would come around and take her back, even though the evidence was stacked against her. Her dad told me she was spiraling and had been begging her parents to help her win me back. I told him there was no chance of that happening and asked him to make sure she stayed away from me. He said he'd do his best, but he didn't have much control over her anymore. Fast forward a few days and I got an email from Katie. Yeah, she found a way to reach out despite the restraining order. The email was this long, rambling mess where she tried to convince me that the baby was mine. She said things like, maybe your vasectomy wasn't 100% effective and we should get a paternity test to be sure. It was such a desperate attempt to pull me back into her web of lies. I forwarded the email to my lawyer who added it to the restraining order case file. Then came the grand finale. I was at work when Carl called me, sounding like he was on the verge of bursting out laughing. He told me to check Facebook. I opened the app and saw that someone had tagged me in a post. It was a screenshot of Katie on a local buy and sell group trying to sell a positive pregnancy test. The caption read, Need a fresh start. $20, no questions asked. I thought it had to be fake, but the account was hers. It even had her profile picture and everything. I couldn't believe it. She was trying to make money off her mess now. The comments were brutal. People were roasting her left and right. Someone even commented, Does the $20 come with a side of betrayal? It was savage. At that point, I was done. I didn't want to be involved in her drama anymore, even indirectly. I called my lawyer and asked if there was any way to make sure she couldn't contact me ever again. He said we could extend the restraining order and add a no-contact clause, so that's what we did. Since then, I haven't heard from Katie or her family. I blocked all her relatives on social media, changed my locks, again, just in case, and have been focusing on rebuilding my life. Carl has been an absolute rock through all of this, constantly checking in and making sure I'm okay. My sister has been helping me set boundaries and reminding me that none of this was my fault. Looking back, it's surreal how quickly things spiraled out of control. I've learned a lot about trusting my instincts and setting boundaries, but mostly I've learned to be grateful for the people in my life who have my back. Katie's chaos was exhausting, but it also showed me who my real friends and family are. So, that's it. The Katie saga is officially over. I'm done giving her any more energy or attention. From here on out, it's all about moving forward. Thanks to everyone who supported me through this, whether it was in real life or online. Y'all are the real MVPs. Here's to better days ahead.